Hey, I'm Ollie. Keep watching and I'll show you three ways how this scene from Godfather Part 1 improves your photography on a visual level, on a storytelling level, and on a psychological or a mindset type level. And as a bonus, I'll tell you what cannoli and guns have to do with the legendary photographer Sally Mann. Now, if you implement one of these three points, your photography is just going to improve guaranteed. But if you implement all three consistently, it's going to add a depth to your photos and change your photography in a big way. So let's get started with point number one. I'll play the whole scene for you when I get into point number two and storytelling in your photography. But first, let's take apart the opening frame as a still image. All right, so you don't have to have a master's degree in photography to realize that the cinematographer put a lot of intent and decision making when he put together the composition of this scene. Let's walk through at least seven of these decisions right now. Number one, the nose of the car is dead center. Also, the man of the hour in the driver's seat, he is also dead center on the horizontal plane. Number two, let's apply the rule of thirds for further context. Check out the maze field on the farther side of the road. There's more centering going on when you notice how it's evenly spaced between the horizontal lines. Number three, if you take a look at the gray road on the bottom left, which has these small few maize stalks and how it corresponds to the sky on the top right, which is also tinged by a few larger maize stalks, it brings a form of symmetry into the diagonal plane. Now, since we're talking about diagonals, let's get straight into point number four. Can you see the way the maze near to the camera draws a diagonal line from the bottom left to the top right? There's more division going on, and I'll get back to this in point number seven. Number five, if you cross that diagonal line of maze with the horizontal line of maze behind the car, you kind of get a sleeve which you could slide the car into, hiding what would eventually happen in this car. I'm sure you can see a lot more line action going on here. And you and I could go on all day simply because of how these elements have been placed within the frame. But let's forget about the lines for now and talk about point number six, depth. The image is given depth through the layering of the different elements in the screen. The first layer being the maze stalks in the foreground, and the second being the street leading up to the car. The third is the car itself, which is a sharp contrast in color to the next layer, which is more maze, which then leads on to the final layer being the sky and the Statue of Liberty. All of these being relatively known masses, giving us an idea of the distance and the scale of the scene. And finally, number seven. What is interesting here is the smallest element, the 30 or 40 maze stalks in the foreground to the right of the scene, end up taking the most amount of space within the frame and they just absolutely dwarf the car. And the car in relation makes the Statue of Liberty seem so small it could fit in the trunk of the car. Now there are two things that make this work and the first is the foreground element, which is generally left out. Most of the time we'll just have a subject and then something big far away. With this foreground element added, we're adding to the sense of depth. The second is the visual order in which the elements are placed in the frame. It's a diagonal line from the bottom right to the top left, from the maze in the bottom right, which then leads to the car in the center, which then leads to the Statue of Liberty, which then leads to the sky. And this diagonal line ends up crossing the diagonal line of the maze I mentioned to you earlier in point number four. X marks the spot, basically. Visually, there's so much to learn here, and the exercise would be for you and I to go and pick a scene, visualize the different lines and symmetries in that scene, and then recreate your own version. Make photos with different elements like this on a consistent basis, and you end up marrying the science of photography with the art of photography to create, well, something just damn beautiful. All right, now who do we attribute all these compositional choices to? Uh, is it the cinematographer, Gordon Willis? Or is it the camera operator, Michael Chapman? We don't know, doesn't matter. Hats off to them both. Let's get on to point number two, how this scene can improve your storytelling ability in photography. And for this though, let's play the scene first. You know, a bit of a spoiler if you've never seen The Godfather, but it's not one that's detrimental to the movie. It's a 34 second clip and I'll play it out in its entirety. But if you're liking it so far, then hit the thumbs up button and give me a like. It's appreciated. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. 
What an iconic line, spoken by Peter Clemenza, a capo regime in the Corleone crime family to his gangster buddy, Rocco Lampone. Hear me out, there's such a valuable lesson to be drawn from this, which will just change the storytelling of your photos entirely. It will especially influence the when of when you take your photos. All right. So, let's break this down. They just assassinated Polly Gatto for betraying the Corleone family, the freaking weasel. Now, why, Polly? Why did you do this? All right, um, you, you might get a few more references to, like, Italian stuff like that from me. I'm sorry. I just love it. All right. Anyways, they're about to drive away from the scene of the crime when Clemenza tells Lampone, hey, you know what? Leave the gun. The gun that the killer just used to commit cold-blooded murder. The gun that he used to shoot the unsuspecting Polly at point-blank range in the back of the head whilst Clemenza was, you know, just casually urinating by the side of the road. And after Lampone tosses it next to the slain, slumping traitor, Clemenza basically remembers the sweets they bought earlier at a bakery somewhere. He's like, yeah, leave the gun, but don't forget those, huh? Take the cannoli. What makes this quote work so well is its juxtaposition of violence, of organized crime, and the everyday life of a mafioso. See, what this line does is it paints the stark contrast between the murder of a human being and remembering the donuts. Sally Mann is a photographer that immediately comes to mind for me. She's often used this type of storytelling in her own photography, especially in her more controversial phases, where she portrays children precisely not as the happily family from next door, but the real family with moody kids uh, who get stung by bees and, and sometimes even poses them with very adult-like expressions. She portrays them in a manner that you are generally not accustomed to seeing children. And what we have here is contrast, something we're very used to visually, but when captured within the theme or the story or the context of a photo, well, it's 10 times more powerful than the slider in Lightroom. The contrast of Instagram happy to real life. The contrast of premeditated murder and bringing home some sweets for the wife. If you as a photographer can capture or even better shape the contrast of the context within the scenes in front of you, whether it's planned or not, well then you marry context and art to give you the holy grail of photography, visual storytelling. Finally, let's get on to the third point that we can learn from this scene. On my Twitter and my Instagram, I use the moniker Oliscura. Oli is clear, it's the first three letters of my name, Olivier. Scura is Latin for jester. The nickname serves to remind me to basically not take life so damn seriously. And what we can learn from this scene is, in the case of Richard Castellano, the actor who portrayed Clemenza based off of the suggestion of his wife, is to not take scripts so damn seriously either. You see, originally the line was simply, leave the gun. Take the cannoli was ad-libbed, it was an improvisation, and thank goodness it was. It changes the scene from simply a murder to how normal something like that is in a mafioso's life. As photographers, when you and I go out for a shoot of some kind, if you can leave room for improvisation, well, sometimes it pays to go off script. If you can leave room for someone else's creative genius to merge with yours, as it was the case with Richard Castellano and based off of the suggestion off of his wife, well, I can't promise you any cannoli, but you might end up marrying art and chance to give you maybe a few more likes. Maybe something so cult you couldn't have planned it in the first place. Drop me a like and a comment and subscribe if you like this video. Presets in the links below. Thanks for watching. My name is Ollie. Peace.